very good morning to you, Grenada. It's another beautiful morning here in the space of. Thank you very much for. <laughs> see what I see? See what I see? Let me continue. Yes, it's a beautiful morning here in the space of. A lot of activity on the waterfront this morning. We've got the Costa Magica in here this morning. I haven't checked to see uh, what her capacity is, but uh, it's a pretty big ship. The Costa, do you remember a few years ago a ship uh, ran aground, a tour ship somewhere out in the, the Mediterranean or someplace there? Yeah, well, this is her sister ship. And in addition to that, at about 7.30 this morning, right at 7.30, the 2020 edition of the Billfish Tournament got started. I have no idea how many boats are taking part this year, but I'll tell you, man, it was another beautiful parade. It's always so nice on uh, the day when this starts to see the Bimini starts. The, the, the fishing boats, they all leave the, uh, the lagoon, the yacht club, and then they parade around the carronage to a point off Fort George. And at 7.30, bang, you hear the cannon go off on the fort. A few years ago, I was dumb enough to be standing right under where the cannon went off. Ooh, yeah, but I survived. So yeah, they're off uh, fishing now and they're gonna be fishing for the next few days. Uh, we'll provide you with updates on those. Uh, yes, the reason why I was laughing a little while ago. <laughs> oh yeah, my good friend, my good friend. Mags is first this morning, congratulations. Maggie May, congratulations. Mags is first. Bernard is also there and Anthea Rello, uh, John Franco, Ramon Frame, they're all saying good morning, just let me uh, Pull up the feed here and make sure everything's going hunky-dory. Uh, Lydia James is also saying good morning to you guys and Peter Bishop. Oh yeah, nice little cast there this morning. So let's uh, do a little scrolling here and make sure we got everything. Yeah man, we're all set to go this morning. So welcome to Good Day Grenada. Okay, so let's take a look at the rundown, see what we're getting into this morning. Just a very quick update on uh, the uh, coronavirus. As of earlier on this morning, I understand that 80 people have now lost their lives, 8-0. Uh, they're all, as far as I know, they're all in uh, China, and 2,700 have been infected. We'll get into a little bit more, a little bit more about that a little later on. Then, it seems like this morning we're, we're talking all about health, all about health. So, you think that we here in Grenada are alone with health care problems? <laughs> think again, pilgrims, think again. I'm going to show you a little piece this morning that uh, will show you that our little neighbor, our big neighbor down to the south of us there, they have their share of problems. Then, if only we were as kind and thoughtful as this little puppy. You know George has a soft heart for pets, animals, especially puppies. Well, I came across this little one, this uh, little video a couple of days ago, and I thought, hmm, let me share this with the folks, show you the sort of puppies I like. And I don't just mean by, in terms of breed. I am talking about things like, you know, little tricks they do, little affections they show. Well, this one, there's a message. There's a message in this little story this morning. And uh, I really do think, oh, there we go. I forgot. There we go. Um, you're you're going to see the message. And uh, I think your heart will be touched. Sometimes puppies uh, are so much nicer than our fellow human beings. Yeah. Then we do have the national report for you. And uh, fiscal alert, yes. We're gonna have an addition uh, fiscal alert this morning. And once again, folks, for those of you who saw the edition last week, you remember how powerful that was. Well, let me tell you something. You better watch this morning. It's not gonna be live. This was actually pre-recorded yesterday afternoon. 
and uh, they sent this to me overnight, and I'm going to run that by you this morning. And when you see it and hear it, you're just going to shake your head. <laughs> Ooh, what's happening to us here? What's happening to us here in Grenada? Uh, okay. Before I get down to business here, let me uh, get back to social media. Hello there, Harry. Good morning, my bro. I think I saw Lennox. Uh, was it yesterday or on Friday? I saw Lennox. Uh, say hi for me if you run into him. John Nozinek says, Good morning, all. I see Mags has a head start on us all. Yeah, man, she does. Not only that, just below uh, your post, John, take a look. She's giving me one of those. You know, what's so funny about this, if you look at Mags, Mags is maybe just a little bit bigger than my finger. And here she comes this morning. Eh? Yeah, right. <laughs> Dream on, girl. Dream on. Um, so, uh, John says, read the coronavirus. Only 80 people. I wonder what the real figures are. That's another thing, you know. Um, I can understand your skepticism, John, really. Um, you're not the only person who's been asking that question. But I'll tell you, I noticed on the weekend that uh, China was being praised because they have come out and said to the people, hey, look, this isn't the end of it. This thing could spread. You know, they were admitting they have a big problem on their hands. And I, th I thought it was really, really good to see that... Uh, coming from China. More cases in, uh, of the uh, coronavirus have continued to emerge as China's death toll continues to rise. The number of dead climbed to at least 80, while in the United States, five cases are now confirmed. New infections in the United States were found in people traveling from Wuhan and in China the tally jumped to more than 2,700. In the UK, 50 people have tested positive for the virus in Britain. And all, so far, have returned negative. No coronavirus there, yet. The current risk to the public is described as low, but England's chief medical officer has said that there is a fair chance that cases will emerge in Britain. At the rate this thing is going, would you be surprised? I don't think so. Really, really don't think so. Nothing further has been heard from our Ministry of Health since a statement which was issued last week, four days ago actually, saying that, and I quote, there's absolutely no cause for alarm in Grenada. However, it goes on to state, but the situation warrants close attention and, listen to this, an evidence-based response. An evidence-based response. Now, I'm trying to make sense of that. Are they saying that their response will be based on evidence? What evidence do we need? Do we need to see our hospital full of victims before we respond? I don't know. Just asking. Just asking. Okay? John says, for world health, all flights from China should be suspended. Uh, Lydia James says, we have one confirmed case in Toronto. This thing is spreading. This thing is spreading. So, folks, meanwhile, if you think we are the only ones with health care problems, Take a look at this video, which came from Trinidad over the weekend. Check this out. By now, most of you would have read the post on my Facebook page this morning. 
I'm so angry about this situation that I thought, uh, let me make some notes and let me do a, a video so that uh, you can understand the severity of this situation. During the week of Christmas, a doctor by the name of Peter Meyer, or Mayer, who worked in collaboration with the Southwest Regional Health Authority, SWREG, did a post citing the most disgusting, deplorable condition of the San Fernando General Hospital. The government of Trinidad and Tobago and past government, present government, and perhaps all governments like to use the United States and other first world countries when comparing certain statistics. So let's do that. Dr. Mayer states that for the comparable population that the San Fernando General Hospital is supposed to be serving, he works at a comparable facility in Sarasota, Florida, where they have 60 ICU units. In Trinidad and Tobago, at our hospital in San Fernando, we have six. I quote him as saying, patients cannot get help for treatable diseases, so they simply die become paralyzed or go blind you pay taxes taxes in trinidad and tobago and you are telling me that your family members your children your parents yourself that this is acceptable treatment at one of our public health facilities this is what you accept under a government he further goes on to say that on Christmas Day, nurses, doctors, technicians did not show up for work. People are sick and dying on the corridors of our hospitals in Trinidad and Tobago. And this is acceptable? This makes me so angry to tears that this is how a government and the public service treats the citizens of this country poor people go to that hospital average citizens working class people go to that hospital all of our hospitals and this is how we are treated this is unacceptable trinidad and tobago a chinese neurosurgery group donated a microscope to the san fernando general hospital a year ago and this doctor had to beg for a donation from his own hospital for a bulb to replace a bulb in that in that microscope a bulb the government of trinidad and tobago could not buy for a microscope a much needed piece of equipment for a hospital in trinidad and tobago a bulb five thousand dollars and you are telling me that it is acceptable for the government of trinidad and tobago to spend 89 million dollars on a president's house that does nothing for this country it is acceptable for the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister to spend $18 million on a second home and he does nothing for this country. Over $100 million spent in refurbishing of properties, but not one cent on the San Fernando General Hospital. And that is acceptable to you, Trinidad and Tobago. That is what you voted for. That is how you want your taxpayers' dollar to be spent. He, this doctor, cited that he asked the staff, even senior medical staff, to wear masks in the operating theater, and they flat out almost caused a riot. Cited that behavior as backward. Where in this world would you hear of a country, a health facility refusing to wear masks in a sterile environment? And now you wonder why so many people die at our public health facilities. Trinidad and Tobago, in any other country, the Minister of Health, Terence de Alsing, the Prime Minister of this country, the SWRHA, and every one of those senior medical staff members of the San Fernando General Hospital would have been before a court of law. This is unacceptable. These are human beings at our hospitals requiring medical attention because they cannot do better for themselves. And this is how they are treated. This is entirely un unacceptable. But I'll tell you what, I'm happy for those who can afford 
the private medical facilities. And for those of you who can't sit back and take what you get, because this is what happens when you refuse to fight for something that, you, that is your right, that is constitutionally allocated to you, Trinidad and Tobago. Sit back and take what you get. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not justifying what is happening here in Grenada. But that is insane. And I just wanted you to see that uh, while we sit here, all of us, we sit here and complain, we're not alone. For those of you who join us on Thursday nights at 8 o'clock for Mechme Chat, haven't had it for the past couple of weeks, but many of you are familiar with it, you know that problems like what this lady's been talking about and what we experience here, it's happening all over the region, all over the region. And that is why the people of the region have been coming down so damn hard on the caliber of governance we have in the region. Seems like anybody could be a minister nowadays. Hey, your neighbor like you? Oh, okay. I'm going to put myself up for election. You know diddly squat about governance or about technical areas such as health or tourism or what have you. And yeah, you become a big shot minister and start traveling all over the globe, getting all sorts of perks. That's why the people of the Caribbean are starting to rebel. I have an uneasy feeling about this. Okay, now. Here is your little inspirational for the day. Where we there we go. If only we humans were as helpful as this little puppy. If only we were as helpful. Check this out. Thanks for saving these seats. I'll take a crown and coke. Well, and the usual for me looks kind of slow tonight. Yeah, I'm doing fine, but I'll be feeling a whole lot better here in a little while. With every sip I take, she's walking through that. that one about a pretty girl who leaves a guy sitting all alone I wish that you box wasn't lit up neon blue it's like reading my mind reminding me I'm missing you with every sip I take she's walking through that door and my heart won't the night before the I don't mind the wait So Joe pull me one more And don't say it I know what you're thinking I'm just wishful drinking Take. She's 
walking through that door And my heart won't break Like every other night before No, I don't mind no weight So Joe, pull me one more And don't say it I know what you're thinking Yeah, Joe, don't say it It's moving, isn't it? Moving, moving, moving. I hope that touched you in some way. 20 minutes after the hour, my dear friends, just let me, uh, before we take our first little break here and, and get into uh, the national report, uh, so let me take a little break here. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Getting back to uh, the coronavirus, Margaret says here, suspending flights won't stop the spread. Proper health practices will, absolutely. But how much attention do we pay to that, Mags? Um, Anthony DeRiggs says, remembering Kobe Bryant, 1978 to 2020, and those who perished yesterday, rest in peace. Life, we never know. Yeah, that's, that was sad news. Somebody uh, called me from Toronto, Clive Devers. He called from Toronto telling me about this. Uh, I was pretty touching. Uh, Claude Butner is saying good morning to you, Mr. Grant and class. John Nosinek says, Margaret, one passenger can infect 150 plus passengers, and as of yet, no cure is found. So isolation is the first option. Do you know the size of China, um, John? <laughs> yeah, I understand what you're saying, but... <laughs> Um, Ryan says, hey, Ryan is up with his usual weather report. 71 in gray skies in Orlando, no cold winds. Healthcare has long been terrible at the San Fernando Hospital in TT. Oh yeah, do you know what you're talking about, Ryan? Thanks for uh, the update. And Anthony says, according to the CBC News, second case of coronavirus confirmed in Ontario. Lydia? Two cases now. Dexter Miller is saying good morning. Uh, John Franco says, it does not make it right, as I said before, this type of action breeds revolution. John, I haven't a clue what you're talking about. Ryan Bond says, dogs have more empathy than humans. Yeah, he would know. He's a, I don't know if he still is, but he was a pet owner, doggy owner. Margaret says, agreed with isolation, which the Chinese have done in isolating the affected area. How do you ban all flights to and from the whole of China, John? If you're going to ban flights, how long will you ban the flights for? <laughs> the reality is that the virus is not going away. Vaccines take a while to come to the market, absolutely, and that's the scary part. Dexter Miller says, it is reported that you can have the virus with no signs of the symptoms because the virus keeps mutating. It's finding ways of disguising itself. Okay, Dr. Dex. Lydia says here about that little puppy piece, Oh, that's so sweet, ain't it? I like the part where the puppy, they're on a bus, and this pregnant lady comes on board the bus, nowhere to sit, so the puppy goes to its owner, makes the owner get up, so that uh, the pregnant lady could have a seat. Yeah, thoughtful. Ernesto says, good morning, one and all. Sad, sad day for sports fans as we're mourning the loss of Kobe, one of basketball's icons, and other, others who were in the crash, including his daughter, 13-year-old daughter. Eh? Mags, I see you're head of the pack today. Congratulations. Uh, see, Ernesto's not a selfish type. He's happy to see Mags win. Ryan says, very touching, very touching. Um, da -da -da. John Nosinek says, read the size of China. Does that include the new province of Grenada? 
Does that include the new province of Grenada? I don't know, John. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Margaret says, tut, 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 John, don't go there. <laughs> Ah, yeah. It's nice to see that on a Monday morning you guys still have your sense of humor. Pilgrims, here comes a break and then the National Report right after this. Inspection and licensing have begun, and at Hotbots, we want you to be ready. From January to February 15th, we're offering vehicle owners with single registration letters 1 to 2,500 and plural registration letters 1 to 250, 10% off our new torque tires and Power Max batteries. Don't get caught unprepared. Visit us today at our motor department in Mungay or our tire bay in Grand Dance, located near Hubbard's Building Supplies. I'm always on the move. Training, traveling, competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Cooperative Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. One more for the road. Look, I find you had a little too much to drink, you know. Let me drive. No, nah, man, I good, I good. Alcohol causes drowsiness, slow response time, distorted vision, impaired decision making, blackouts, decreased coordination. Drinking water does not make you less drunk. Never drink and drive. It takes only a second. I'm really, really sorry. Sorry? <laughs> sorry can't bring back my sister. <laughs> You've been drinking. I can smell it. <laughs> this message is brought to you by this group of insurance companies, the Traffic Advisory Body, and the Traffic Department. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Together with you, our customers, we energize our community. Together with you, we energize our economy. We are working together to give our nation a better tomorrow. With you, we energize our future. Together, we energize our nation. Thank you for partnering with us as we energize our spice island. Brenlick, energizing our Grenada. Infrastructure Minister and Technical Team visit Molyneux and Monk Morris to conduct assessment for possible bypass road ahead of City B visit. Details of this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back. With the details of the news for Friday, January 24, 2020, I am Sherry Ann Noel. Minister for Infrastructure, Honorable Gregory Boeing, on Friday led a team of engineers from his ministry, representatives from physical planning, along with residents of Mount Morris and Molinay, to look at key areas outside of the fault line in Molinay to come up with the best possible alternative for a bypass route or new secondary road in the area. The visit was key as a proposal has to be put forward identifying the best solutions to the bypass roads to representatives of the Caribbean Development Bank who are expected on the island on Monday. 
The technical visit came after a meeting on Tuesday evening with residents of the area to update them on the rapid slippage on a section of the Molinier Main Road. This um, alternate could be a component of the bypass road plus a new piece of road or entirely new concept with respect to the roads. That's why we have with us here people who know the area, our engineers, so, so that we can get a first proposal. The Caribbean Development Bank uh, team will be visiting with us on Monday. So we must have a proposal to show to them because we have asked them for assistance with respect to the bypass roads. The repairs to the main road remains under the UK SIF project. However, there is an immediate need to have a proposal in place for an alternative for the CDB's visit. While we have 16 million US dollars, which it appears will be totally insufficient at this point in time, we are concentrating on the bypass road to have a more safe and a friendly a route for people traversing from the north to the south of the island. So we are here and uh, the team will be visiting so that the people in the area could say, yes, this is a good road. We'll know who the owners are so that in short order we can find and complete the proposal. Okay. So you, you're dealing strictly with the Molinier area or are you going through other points in Mount Morris and so? Well, the alternative must be other areas. Since we're going to bypass, we want somewhere you can start outside of the fault and the one side of the fault and end on the other side of the fault. So most likely it will be starting higher up in Molinier, going through Mount Morris and coming out at a lower point in Mount Morris. That's what we're looking at. So as I said, it could be a combination of some existing roadways plus new bits for the alternative route. Civil engineer and the Ministry of Infrastructure, Lyndon Bullen, told the GIS the technical visit is crucial and the inclusion of residents who are familiar with the area was key in them having a better understanding of the area. We have been in consultation with um, residents of the area. We got a chance to um, hear some of their concerns, some of the suggestions, and so we're going to try to utilize that when we try to find solutions in, in terms of improving the, the roadway. Um, we know it's a problem not only for the people in the community, but also for the, the road users as well. So um, it helps us to optimize the solutions that we can propose in terms of um, alleviating, alleviating the, the stresses on the street of Mount Morris, the bypass, and possibly finding alternative routes to um, bypass the Molinier area. Bullen also used the opportunity to update on the progress of procuring materials to upgrade the Mount Morris Road, especially in areas that are deemed treacherous. Right now we're doing something more for emergency nature. Um, so we're going to see as best as possible how much works can be done within that period to clear the traffic problems we have in at Mount Morris. So within the next three months we will see a lot of um, works being done. Um, we actually started acquiring some um, poles, some posts for guardrails. There are areas we see where we can widen. We can change the type of drains in the areas from box drains to slipper. And these are some of the works that we plan on taking on within the next few weeks. Junior Phillips resident of Mount Morris and builder by profession who has knowledge of the Molinier area where the fault has occurred that is causing rapid land movement has given off his time to take the team on a tour of possible areas that can be used for the bypass. Knowing the terrain in Mount Morris and the particular area that we're dealing with, some people are suggesting that an easy fix could be done by cutting the area by Charlie's Bar and doing another road, which would not make any sense because a complete hill from Molinier all the way up to Mount Morris by Mr. Leo Dowden is a gravel hill and all the way around to Molinier. So to find an alternative route uh, through that, it definitely would have to be through Mount Morris. So I would like to take the fellas on a visit to, uh, to the top because we already know the bottom so they could see the complete terrain that we're dealing with and know that if we touch that gravel hill for any short route we'll be hoping a can of worms. As a, a contractor slash builder um, you would have constructed homes well, we normally call that area over the plateau um, and that, that is a particular area that you, you are going to take them to. Um, what can you say about the soil type and so? Well I, I, I built three houses and it's all gravel. All the foundations are basically had to be designed to suit, to fit on the gravel bed. And um, hence my knowledge is first hand as to what's in the area. Residents are urged to stay away from the fault area and await the conclusion of the geotechnical studies, which will give a clear indication as to the cause of the movement.
Moving along, 250 Grenadians will be employed with the Royalton Grenada Resort and Spa when it commences operations March 1, 2020. The hotel chain is staging a three-day job fair in Grand Dance, giving Grenadians the opportunity to be screened and interviewed for various positions. The Royalton is the latest addition to the hotel chain in Grenada, with 269 luxury suites and a prime beachfront location. It will be managed and operated by Blue Diamond Resorts as part of a new strategic alliance with Rex Resorts the former owners and operators of the Grenadian Hotel. The job fair started on Thursday and will end on Saturday. Right now we are offering 500 positions because we are going to open in March 1st and then we are going to split this uh, hiring process in two phases. We are going to hire uh, 250 people starting in February 1st and then we are going to hire another 250 and as the season goes up we will be hiring more people so we are looking forward to have a very good partnership with Grenadian people and to start making a very good and strong relationship with the country. Corporate Organizational Development Manager Blanca Gareva Ramirez says she anticipates the growth of each employee through talent development training. The past two days have been great. We have witnessed a lot of talented Grenadian people coming uh, with impressive resumes and they have some of they have a hospitality experience and some of them of them do not have hospitality experience but we truly believe in in talent development you know and we are a company that map the talent and we have a very strong path for, to develop be, uh, our people in be, to better positions and one of our goals in, in human resources is to make sure that we can send them to other properties in other countries with better positions. So this is a strategy that comes for talent and culture. This is how we name our HR area and we are having a lot of success. So we are very excited to include Grenadian people in this concept and maybe see them uh, in other properties with better positions soon. 90 applicants were successful on Thursday. Levon Pierre, Mary Wise and Akisha Benjamin are all thankful for the opportunity to be employed with the Royalton Resort and Spa. I'm always open to the negative and the positive so whether or not I didn't get approved I would have just find something else to move on to, try to empower myself to develop myself into the tourism industry. At the Royal Town, I'll be a butler at the um, Diamond Club. I'm pretty much excited. This helped me to empower myself, be more confident, and achieve great things. Well, it feels good to be coming back to the Royal Town, to be working. I feel real good and exciting to work with them again. I'll be good coming, back, coming to work here as a waitress. Any open vacancies they have. I'm willing to apply or fill any vacancies. I have four years experience in the hotel industry and I work as a laundry attendant for four years. I feel great to see a lot of young people here today getting an opportunity to explore their talents. This is the National Report. More news after the break. 8 p.m. sharp. 8 p.m. sharp. Saturday, January 25th at the Sutter's Bus Terminal. It's the final of the National Celebrations Comedy Independence Calypso Monarch Competition 2020. 11 artists have been selected to challenge the reigning monarch, Sean Nas, the sewer support. Admission free. Come out in your numbers and witness for yourself. Will Sewer Support hold on to his reign? Or will Rootsman Kelly, Teacher Eddie, Hawks, Turner, Zena, Gunn, Katura, The Reporter, Denson, Professor Shaggy, or Royalty rise to the occasion? Only time will tell. Remember the date, Saturday, January 25th, 8 p.m. Success Burst Terminal. It's the final of the Independence Calypso Competition. Welcome back. The First Caribbean International Bank continues to embark on raising awareness with the Grenada Cancer Society and the Pink Ribbon Society. On Wednesday, the bank donated 43,500 EC dollars that was raised from the Walk for the Cure. This is to enable the organization to spread awareness for cancer. On September 25, 2019, the Walk for the Cure was launched. This activity is done annually. 
Country manager of the CIBC, Mr. Nigel Olive, in his brief remarks, said that the end of 2019 program does not signify an end to cancer awareness. I will hasten to say thank you to everyone who participated in this year's activity. Um, I think the record showed that we had about 400 persons walk in and we, had in the re we were able to raise $43,500, which will go um, to the Cancer Society and the Pink Ribbon Society um, by way of a presentation later on in the, in the program um, to allow them to continue to work towards improving that space in terms of early detection, um, prevention, cure and education. Today's handover, while Linda suggested that it, it is a cause to celebrate and marks the end of a period in terms of what we have done for this last year's program, um, we should not allow it though to mark the end of our drive and focus to improve and educate, prevent, detect and treat cancer. Instead, it should set in motion for the f efforts for us to be able to forge forward and redouble the efforts in terms of how well we're fighting cancer. 29,000 was donated to the Cancer Society. Earl Charles from the Grenada Cancer Society expressed his gratitude to the bank. He assured them that the money will be used in an efficient manner. With regard to the donation we have just received, I just want to assure the bank that um, we are planning in a very detailed way in terms of how we spend whatever uh, funds we receive from the public. In that regard, with regard to the assistance to patients, we are trying to coordinate assistance to patients with the, with the Pink Ribbon and the Ministry of, of Health to ensure that assistance goes to where it is most needed and it will be most effective. The Pink Ribbon Society was given $14,500. Frederica Cummins from the Pink Ribbon Society is also grateful for the contribution. I would like to say a sincere thank you to First Caribbean Bank, the management and staff, especially the team that organized the Walk for the Cure. We are happy to be involved. Uh, they have involved us in the walk and to help us with getting some of the do donations that was raised. It will go a long way to helping patients with cancer. As you know, cancer is a very expensive disease to treat, and it will go a long way to those who cannot afford. And with this, we come to the end of the National Report for Friday, January 24, 2020. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sherry and Noel, thanking you for viewing. friends uh, quite a few comments there this morning on the national report uh, very quickly uh, Anthony says people should take that virus seriously old people say leap years bring more sickness and death just quoting what I heard them say Margaret says oh Lyndon all grown up John Nosinek says that read the new road that was talked about in the GIS's report. Don't they test drill before building anything? I don't know. 
Claude Pudna says, Mr. Grant, that dog, that puppy we showed earlier on, is showing people how to care for one another. Help the helpless. It's a good deed, people. Absolutely. Kipling Francis say good morning to you guys. Uh, Margaret is asking, how many Grenadians have or will be employed in management positions at the Royalton? Good question. She says she's just asking. And John obviously has an answer. He says, I think you know the answer to that one. Um, <laughs> Ryan Jabon, now a nurse out there in uh, Orlando, says cancer is very expensive and complicated to treat. Yeah. Okay. So much for the National Report. Now, let us get right in. We're running a few minutes behind time. So let us get right into this week's edition of Fiscal Alert. Grenada is awakening to the realities of the National Health Insurance Program as it was proposed to us. Okay? What is hidden in the dark will come to light. Those of you who saw last Monday's edition of Fiscal Alert know how powerful that program was and how many eyes it opened and how many questions started to be asked. For those of you who joined us yesterday, we played that uh, excerpt from Monday yesterday and there were tons of comments. If you missed it, you go back to uh, the website or uh, uh, Facebook, check it out, check out the comments. Well, this morning's program is not live. It was pre-recorded yesterday afternoon. And the Bain sisters, at least two of them, are here. When I say here, pre-recorded with this week's edition of Fiscal Alert. Again, another eye opener. Check this out. Good morning, George, and good day to all our listeners and viewers, the Fiscal Alert, as we share knowledge and experience. With me this morning is Dr. Janice Bain, and Mrs. Jimma Bain Thomas is joining us on Facebook as we continue the discussion on the national health insurance. This morning, we place the national health insurance in a broader context. To do so, we examine the policy brief that could be found on the Government of Grenada website, the National Sustainable Development Plan, the proposal for OPJIPA for a model national health insurance, and the medium-term fiscal framework. First, an analysis of any proposal must be based on the terms of reference of the proposal or the mandate given. In reviewing the proposal, we found that the focus was on both the development and implementation of the national health insurance. In the budget speech, mention was made that we are in the implementation phase. We therefore need to be clear in terms of going forward whether the proposal is intended to cover development of the national health insurance, implementation of the national health insurance, or a combination of development and implementation. Lauren, because the scope of the services that is outlined in level one is still yet to be determined, is that the reason you're saying that we're still in the developmental phase? Is it because in the developmental phase at this point you will have identified exactly what services are covered and exactly how much it will cost? Yes, and because the, the, the proposal refers also to the three layers proposed, it suggests that we are still in the development phase and clarity will be, need, will be needed in terms of where are we at this point in time. I will go next to the anchoring of a proposal. 
as mentioned last week by Gemma, the national health insurance is the financing component of your health strategy. Therefore, the proposal must be anchored in your plan for the health sector or your health strategy. The policy brief on the government website refers to a health sector plan extending 2015 to 2025. We also note that we have the National Sustainable Development Plan. The proposal must therefore either reference these documents, which plan it is supporting, or summarize the key proposals in the health sector plans that are taken into consideration in doing the proposal. I go now to the governance issue. The governance of any project is important for its success, and the governance structure should be clearly defined. In the National Sustainable Development Plan, reference is made to private-public sector partnership. In the report from JIPO, reference is also made to private-public sector partnership. We need to be clear. Will this be a private venture? Will it be public? Will it be a formal private-public partnership arrangement? And this is critical in terms of going forward in analyzing the proposal by JIPO. Laurel, in terms of the governance structure and the uh, public-private partnership, one may argue that the government is collecting 2% on goods and services, and also on the gov.gd website, the government has listed several stakeholders, including the Grenada Trade Union Council and the Grenada Chamber of Industry and Commerce. And also JIPA on their proposal have also listed several stakeholders. Would that be enough to consider this a public-private partnership? I will say no. I think financing is not adequate to cover private-public sector partnership. The partnership is supposed to be an integral part, particularly in the decision-making process. So it should be an integrated approach in the implementation of the national health insurance. One other concern, Laurel, is that of ownership. And if I should just take a minute to read the information that is found on the gov.gd in terms of ownership of the national health insurance. And it says that the national insurance board, which currently administers our social security program, is the entity that is responsible for the national health insurance program. This iconic national entity has gained the respect and institutional reputa rep reputation to effectively champion the implementation of the Grenada National Health Insurance Program. And it went on to say, as an institution responsible for the long-term benefits of contributors, the National Insurance Board is well-placed to provide a long-term perspective of this program. So the question that would arise for me from this statement at the Grenada, that, at the gov.gd is what is the role of the Ministry of Health and also what is the role of the National Health Insurance Program Secretariat? And in addition, one of the main questions from this would be who is really in charge of the National Health Insurance. And there is where we will need clarity, particularly, as you said, the role of the National Insurance Scheme and whether it is private, public, or a combination of private and public partnership. I now turn to coverage of the health, National Health Insurance, and all documents are consistent. They refer to universal health coverage. In my analysis, universal health coverage will take some time. It will not be completed in one, two, or three years. 
And therefore, any model for national health insurance, particularly where there is an em emphasis on universal health coverage, should be dynamic. This means the analysis should be extending over a long period. I also want to note that in the JIPA proposal, there was no specific reference to vulnerable groups. In the National Sustainable Development Plan, there is a focus on vulnerable groups, particularly the elderly. Therefore, a proposal on national health insurance must include a focus of our target on the vulnerable groups in society. This takes me to another aspect of the model and its consistency with the National Sustainable Development Plan, the treatment of the medical centers. In the National Sustainable Development Plan and on the policy brief on the government website, community health is stressed. The medical centers will be upgraded. They will be allowed to open 24 hours with trained personnel, doctors, nurses. They will provide some diagnostic care and also some specialized services. No mention is made of this, in the inclusion of the medical centers in the JIPA proposal. And this is a critical component in going forward. And so Laura, Laurel, uh, in addition, when we talk about the medical station, just to put things in perspective a little bit, currently we have a population of about 105 to 110,000 people. We have three medical hospitals, St. George's, Princess Alice, and Princess Royal. And total number of hospital beds available within Grenada, Caracol, and Pitti Martinique is 274. So we can see that we need to continue to strengthen our community services so that we can take some of the burden away from the hospital and into the community services. Um, in addition, we have growing challenges within our health system, especially with obesity and also with conditions like diabetes. Uh, in the study, that was done for 2017. Diabetes is one of the main causes of death and premature death. And it's also one of the main causes of people living with disability. The other cause of people living with disability is obesity. So we can see that we need to continue to strengthen the community health centers and so we can focus on wellness and preventing the death and the disability that is as a result of conditions like diabetes and obesity. One other point I would like to make is that in the National Sustainable Development Plan, there is a focus on improving the health facilities in the community. However, in the JIPA model, there is no mention of the medical stations at level one. The only mention or the closest mention that's made of the medical station or the health facilities is in the context of the super fund. And so my question is, are we about to, priorita to privatize, sorry, our community health centers. And hence the need to incorporate the medical centers in the proposal, what will be done with these. And this brings me now to the costing and financing element. In the National Sustainable Development Plan, there are proposals for financing healthcare through tax reform, introduction of new tax, increasing the rate of tax. In the JIPA proposal, there is, propo there is a proposal for the levying of a 1% to 2% tax on goods and services. However, any analysis of the financing of the health insurance 
must be com accompanied by a dynamic analysis of the costing. The costing should take into consideration one, the macroeconomic context, what we are, what is our economic environment, economic and social environment. Detail costing to include cost of institutional arrangements for implementing the national health insurance, cost of operating the national health insurance to include the operational costs, number one, the capital costs associated with the national health insurance. We also need the cost of improving the health system. This cost must be related to the benefits to de be derived. Thereafter, the financing arrangement could be included. This cost and benefit analysis must take care place over an extended period, and I suggest a minimum period of 10 years to do this dynamic analysis. And it's only then the financing arrangement could be examined thoroughly. If we look at the financing arrangement also. Laura, before, before you move on, um, and what I'm understanding from your description there is that when we are designing the National Health Insurance Plan, our first step should really be to determine what will be covered at level one. And I'm just focusing on level one. So our first step should be to determine what is covered at level one. And after that, cost, how much will it cost us to provide the services we are going to provide at level one? And once we know the cost of the services of level one, then we can determine whether the levy that we need to put in place is 1%, 2%, or 3%. Exactly. And I just want to include some implications of uh, the levy, one or two percent. Now the levy, levy is on goods and services. It's consistent with JIPA proposal where everyone should contribute to the national health insurance. Everyone should contribute to the national health insurance. So it's consistent. However, we must note that in that proposal, the lower income group will be paying a higher proportion of the income towards the national health insurance. And I will give an example in case Ryan and John are with us today. Let's say Ryan has an income, monthly income of $100 and John has a monthly income of $200. They both go to the supermarket, buy the same basket of goods and services. Ryan pays $10 for his national health insurance tax, and John pays $10 for his national health insurance tax. It means that Ryan is paying 10% of his income to the national health insurance, while John is paying 5% of his income to the national health insurance. The lower income, therefore, pays a higher proportion of his income to the national health insurance. This is also important because prices, particularly during the first round, also increases when there is an introduction of expenditure related taxes. So just to note that while everyone will be contributing to the national health insurance, the lower income groups will be paying a higher proportion of their income to the national health insurance. So in essence, Laurel, the lower income people will have a higher burden when it comes to the national health insurance. Because yes. Because they're using up more of their disposable income towards the national health insurance. Yes. In that addition, is in addition, because we have three different levels and level one is the only level where everyone is being covered. Now, once you get out of level one, the person with the lower income will still have less funds available to take care of the healthcare needs. 
and the person with the higher income may also have the benefit of additional health insurance to help take care of their medical needs. So in this proposal, it seems like the burden is still more on the person with the lower income. And this brings me to another point that is discussed in the Grenada.gov. And the, one of the objectives of the national health insurance is to provide equitable and sustainable health insurance. Given what we previously discussed, will you say that the national health insurance as it is now has met the goal of being equitable and sustainable? I will take equitable first. It is not equitable. It fulfills the objective as outlined in the JIPA report that everyone will contribute, but is not equitable. In terms of sustainability, I would mention here that it ensures that there is a pool of resources available for financing health insurance because of the nature of the tax. However, I cannot comment on sustainability as we need a dynamic and detailed analysis of financing in order to make a decision on the sustainability of the financing mechanism. So, in summary, what do we need? One, we need to know the mandate. Is it development of national health insurance, implementation of national health insurance, a combination of two? We need for any proposal on national health insurance to be linked with the National Sustainable Development Plan. It should be anchored in a health plan. In terms of coverage, we want to ensure that the vulnerable groups, the elderly, are taken into consideration or targeting in a, in a national health insurance. Importantly, is the medical centers, community health. How will this be treated? Will that be a private entity under the national health insurance? We would need clarity there. And in relation to financing, any assessment of financing must be include a thorough analysis of the costing, the services to be provided, the costing, and for that costing to be extended over a period, minimum period of 10 years. And this to give us some pointers as we go forward in assessing the national health insurance proposal. Thank you, Laurel. Um, I believe that the discussion on the national health insurance is needed. It's a good start, but it will, it pointed that we still have a lot of work to do, a lot of more discussions to have, so we can get a final product that is in line with the objectives as stated on the government website. Thank you. Have a good day, all. All righty, folks, uh, once again, the debate on the National Health Insurance Program has sparked some responses here from you this morning. Um, I'm sure it's going to take you a little while to uh, absorb everything that was said there this morning, but let me share some of the comments with you. Gemma Bain Thomas says, still need more clarification on the role of the NIS. Uh, Ryan Jabon says, I don't like the JIPA Health Network connection. Short and sweet. He also goes on to say, Grenada Community Health Polyclinics seem to be the way to go. All right. Hey, Ryan, you better contact these folks and put your input in. JIPA, uh, as far as I know, is based out of Florida. You're in Orlando. Uh, Peter Bishop says, thanks to the Bain sisters for shining the light on this health plan with JIPA and government. Yes, Peter, we all appreciate what these folks have been uh, opening up our eyes to. Ryan says, Lauren, high quality health care at low costs? <laughs> yeah, that's a no-brainer, Ryan. 
He goes on to say, economies of scale in government spending can be put to the NHI. And then he says, no for equitable. The poor get slanted. That's the part of this piece that really jumped out at me, you know. One would have thought that this thing would have been uh, an asset to uh, low-income people, but it seems like that's questionable. Uh, he also says, NHI should be a mixed economy with private and public investment. And finally, Margaret says, Ryan, sometimes I just have to shake my head and laugh. When PRG launched its primary health care program in 83, polyclinics were a major part of the program. So says Mags. Alrighty, folks. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. I can assure you this debate's going to be waging on, but I really wish to express my appreciation to the Bain sisters for opening up their eyes. You know, when, when they started this thing last Monday, I mean, I just sat here and went, wow. And uh, not just me, based on the feedback I saw last Monday, the feedback I saw yesterday, and the feedback I'm seeing this morning. Um, yeah, there are concerns, there are concerns. And so much of this could be avoided. On, if only there was a little bit more openness with the people of Grenada. You know, all these under table deals that are going on, and we finally hear about it when it's almost a done deal, or when it's a done deal. The people who are supposed to be benefiting are being left out. And that's where, that's what sparks this aggravation that you're seeing. Ryan says, have met Dr. Kester Ned at one of our dialysis funding fets. Well, good for you. And he says, yep, I guess he means uh, he is going to contact Dr. Ned and have a chat with him. Okay. Alrighty, folks, uh, let's take a little break here now. And uh, don't go, don't go, don't go. We're going to come back and wrap it up. Hang on. Hey, Lynn. Hey, neighbor. Here's the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers and other devices when they're not in use. We also replace our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Grenlec is always advising us not to open the fridge too often. That's right and my family washes and irons in bulk. With fuel prices changing all the time, how do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store.
Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen now, I need you to go down to food care to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the food fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, food fair granites will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and food fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Folks, just before we Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. Grenadamarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Yeah, Georgie Porgy jumped the gun there just a minute ago, didn't he? Just before we go, there are a few comments that have come in, and I think it's important that I share them with you. Michael Gilligan says, Hello, George. Is there any discussion utilizing the manpower of St. George's Medical School to use students doing their clinical rotations to run clinics in outlying communities, such as Satares, Guab, etc. Uh, I know that uh, from time to time, students from the university do go out to do these little, uh, what do they call them? To provide health services, you know, check blood pressure and sugar levels and stuff like that. Um, Ernesto Jose says, and he refers to them here as the brain, not, not the bane, the brain sisters. He says, good morning, our brain sisters. One of the biggest issues in the United States election is health care, and yet no one seems to get it right. I don't know how it will work for Grenada as the debates go on. Yeah. Bet there are going to be a lot of debates on this one. And uh, hello, Sean. You're late, but better late than never. Always nice seeing you. And uh, Ryan here has another comment. Ryan says, openness in Grenada. Jeez. You know, Ryan, as I mentioned a little while ago, if there was a little bit more openness, I think you'd find a lot less of these debates coming up. I'm sure you have heard about consultation after consultation after consultation in this place. I think perhaps one of the most vivid examples was leading up to the referendum. People got so frustrated and eventually they rejected the referendum on the CCJ. Remember that? Remember that? People were taking their precious time and going to these consultations, making suggestions, recommendations, which were all just ignored. Okay? And obviously, a very high level of frustration crept in. And on voting day, they went to the polls and said, remember that? Remember that. Twice. So yes, if only, if only things weren't done in such a concealed manner as they are being done right now. And you have to ask yourself this question. If everything is being done on our behalf, on the up and up. Why is there so much need for so much secrecy? 
The referendum, as I mentioned. Oil and gas. Healthcare. Ask yourself that question. Ryan says, throughout the countries of England, there are community health centers with polyclinics. I have used them. SGU should be collaborated more with regard to Grenada's health care. Well, I'm in no position to say how much consultation has gone on with the SGU. Okay, let's make that very clear. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, I think that's... Uh, Ryan says, yep, actions speak louder than words. Absolutely, Ryan. Pilgrims, parting word from the Holy Scriptures. As we pull the curtain down on this Monday morning, start of a great week, great week. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 to 22. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take the light and my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child, and one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. Isaiah 65 verses 17 to 22. Can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. Yeah. Okie doke, pilgrims, 23 minutes after the hour. Thank you for your extra 23 minutes. Uh, appreciate your time. Sherry Ann Palmer. Sherry Ann Palmer? Hello, Sherry Ann. Good to hear from you, girl. Uh... Ernesto is reminding uh, folks here that uh, health care is not a privilege, but a right. Pilgrims, you have a great day, a great week, and yeah, a great life. It's my prayer for you, okay? God bless you, and by his grace. Let's all reassemble here tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. So long.